There are two kinds of particles in our world. On one side, you have something called the fermions. They're like their own family. And these are the building blocks. These are the electrons. These are the quarks. These are the neutrinos. And then on the other side, you have something called the bosons. And they're their own family. And these are the force carriers. These are the photons and the gluons and the Z bosons. And also the Higgs boson. They all, they're all related over here. And then all the fermions are related over here. And what sets them apart is this property of subatomic particles called spin. We don't have to worry, for this case, you know, for this discussion, we don't have to worry about what that actually means. We just need to know that there is this property called spin. Particle, different particles have different amounts of spin. And there's two different kinds of spin. Either there's spin that's an integer number, like 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the boson family. Or there's spins with half that, either spin half, three halves, five halves, seven halves. You get the idea. These are the fermion family. And it turns out this one very simple thing, this spin, that completely separates these two families. Because the fermions act totally differently than the bosons. Like these are the carriers of the forces of nature. And these are like the building blocks of nature. And it, what sets them apart is the spin. Now, like I talked about last time, physicists love symmetries. Symmetries give us unification. Symmetries show us relationships between different things that we didn't know was there before. And there is a hypothetical symmetry between spins. We call this symmetry supersymmetry. What it means, if it's true, if it's true, if supersymmetry is true, it means that the fermion family is actually distantly related to the boson family. That they're not just two separate groups, that there are actual relationships. There's some like great great grandmother all the way up here in the family tree that they can all point to. And so they're actually all distant cousins. This is potentially a very powerful idea because supersymmetry is able to solve some problems or potentially solve some problems, some things we don't understand in the standard model for various complicated mathematical reasons that we're not going to dig into, it could be possible with supersymmetry to explain some things like how, why gravity is so weak, why the Higgs boson has the mass it does, and a few other little niggling problems having to do with unification of forces at high energy. These are outstanding problems in physics, like outstanding as in they're great, and also outstanding as in we haven't solved them yet. Supersymmetry is an attempt to solve them, that if you create this link between the two families, you get some extra interactions, you get some extra games you can play in the mathematics that potentially solve these problems. Now, this idea of supersymmetry was first introduced in the string theory in 1970. That's right. It was first introduced in the 1970s for string theory. Now, before that, in the 60s, string theory was just a theory of the strong nuclear force. And it kind of died on the vine, but some people kept the flame alive and were poking around. And they introduced su supersymmetry. And when you hear that string theory is an attempt to explain all the things in the universe, that it can explain the forces of nature and the building blocks, it's through the mechanism of supersymmetry. Because originally, it was just going to describe the bosons. It was just a bosonic theory. But with these links via supersymmetry to the fermion family, strings are able to describe everything. So in string theory, everything strings. You got an electron, that's a string. You got a photon, that's a string. You got a Higgs boson, that's a string. Everything's a string, but it's supersymmetry that creates those linkages. When string theorists introduced this concept, the number of dimensions that they needed went from 26 down to 10, which I guess is an improvement. And this is set the groundwork for string theory to truly become a theory of everything. 
I will see you next week for more explorations of string theory. But for now, please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter and keep this show alive. I really do appreciate it. And go be super symmetric.